What is up, people of the internet? BP here. And if you guys have never been to my channel, welcome. Value of Truth, my channel is a creation that I started many years ago. Um, this channel was created in 2014. Uh, the one I had before that was, I think, started in 2011. Anyways, I have less than 100,000 views, only 616 subscribers, quite the unsuccessful channel. But that is okay because it's not about the numbers, it's about the impact. So I want to leave my impact on the world as best as I can sharing my lovely wisdom with you guys. Um, yeah, so today we're gonna be talking about Marnie Schulenberg, who starred in As the World Turns and One Life to Live. She died from cancer at the age of 37. And this was released today. And this hits home because I also am 37 years old, so I can try to imagine what that's like. But anyways, I've never heard of this lady, but I'll show you a picture. There she is. She's quite the lovely lady. And um, yeah, I wanted to talk to you guys about a couple things today that uh, relate to this story. So this is not just about her. This is about you. Okay? This is about everybody. And uh, yeah, this applies to everyday life. So I want you guys to not just pay attention to the story about this woman's life, but also I want you guys to pay attention to my words in addition to this, uh, this, news, this news article, okay? So, Marnie Schulenberg, who starred on the soap operas As the World Turns and One Life to Live, has died, according to multiple reports. She was 37. Per the Hollywood Reporter deadline and variety, Schulenberg died due to a complication from, from breast cancer. USA Today has reached out to Schulenberg's representatives for further details. Um, this goes on to explain that she was married and had a child. And in her last Instagram post on May 8th, Schulenberg reflected on celebrating Mother's Day with breast cancer. One of the photos shows her wearing an oxygen mask while reading a book with her daughter. Here's to remembering that nothing is permanent, Schulenberg wrote in the caption to soaking up the imperfections, and that the best thing you can do for your child is to make them feel loved, safe, and supported, just like my mother did for me. Screw the oxygen mask. Just remember how to breathe. Schulenberg opened up about her cancer diagnosis in 2020. In a May post before her 36th birthday, Schulenberg wrote, I contemplate, how does one celebrate a birthday after a stage four breast cancer diagnosis in the middle of a global pandemic while raising a five-month-old. And uh, these next words is what I wanted to kind of point out to you and go from there. So she goes on to say this. She says, What kind of sick purveyor of my fate gave me the gift to bring life into this world only to try and take mine in its place? She continued. Zach and I facil facilitate? I don't know what that word is. I don't think I've ever read that before. I apologize for my lack of understanding, okay? <laughs> my lack of vocabulary. But uh, anyways, so she goes on. Zach and I facilitate between, uh, between utter devastation and fierce determination. The narrative of the life we signed on for the day we married will never be the same. Now we must adjust a present and exp expletive fight. Cancer sucks. Okay. Um... Marnie, I understand and feel your pain. Maybe not to that quite extent because I've never had cancer, but I have had family that has, okay? I had an aunt. She had cancer in her 30s. She survived, and she lay, went on to live up until she was about 50 years old, and I think she died at the age of 50. So cancer didn't get her, but heart attack did. All right, so why do I talk about this? Well, to basically point out the fact that we all die, all right? Death is part of life. Death is part of the process of being on this planet. Um, 
And I understand that you were upset with God. It's very apparent that you were upset with how God dealt uh, the hand to you. But I want you to know that you are not the only one. It just feels that way. It feels like you're being picked on. But you made it to 37. That's not bad. All right. A lot of people do not even make it to 22. Okay. And as they say, the good die young. All right. Um, That being said, I wanted to kind of compare this story to a thought, a thought of how people end up in the current state that they are mentally. How do people end up going from this lady, beautiful, full of life, full of hope, to this lady here, which she complains, obviously, about the life she had and the hand she was dealt. All right, I'm not judging you, sweetheart, because guess what? We all go through problems, trials, tribulations, and um, it's how you cope with it. How you deal with it, that makes a difference. So I wanted to explain how a person goes from being this type of individual, normal, happy, to now life is is bad, okay? And I wanted to restore some hope to you if you are feeling this way just like she is. Because many of us can take life at face value and accept it or... We can fight it and say, this is not what I signed up for, okay? So I wanted to kind of put things in perspective for you and maybe try to restore some hope to you that, hey, all is not lost. Relax, okay? I understand you may feel some type of way against God, but try to understand that he's your only hope, okay? He's the only God we have, and he's a good God, all right? And I'm going to explain why in this video. So before we go any further, I wanted to um, enlighten you on the origin of Mr. Freeze. And if you've never heard of Mr. Freeze, well, let me briefly explain. Mr. Freeze is from Batman. Okay. If you guys have ever seen Batman, the animated series from the 1990s, it is a classic. It is a masterpiece. Okay. I grew up on it. As a kid, me and my brother would watch this show. And yeah, this is a clip from YouTube basically explaining the origin of Mr. Freeze and how he went from a normal human being to a stone-cold killer. And uh, I, I want to use this as an illustration because I want you to understand that People go through life and they either cope by turning to drugs, alcohol, and bitterness, or they cope by just giving it to God. Now, the choice is yours. You can end up bitter, angry, upset, sad, depressed, or you can just accept it. Just accept life for what it is. And I recall a a scripture verse that says, if my people, and he he talks about uh, if my people accept the punishment of their doings, okay, then God in turn will return their captivity. But there's a form of acceptance that comes into play. And you have to accept it for what it is. That is why we have what's called the serenity prayer of God, give me the serenity to accept the things which I cannot change and the courage to change the things which I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Um, So part of salvation is acceptance, accepting God for who he is. You have to just accept him. You have to accept life for what it is. So acceptance actually plays a key factor in your salvation, okay? So I want you to try to understand where I'm coming from in this illustration. And we're going to be watching this little clip. It's not very long. It's only four minutes. 
And I want you to bear with me as we watch this together and we can kind of tie in the illustration to Mrs. Schulenberg. All right, and what we can learn from this and how perhaps we can change the course of our destiny from a bad one to a good one, okay? And uh, we'll go from there. This is how I'll always remember you. Surrounded by winter, forever young, forever beautiful. Rest well, my love. The monster who took you from me will soon learn that revenge is a dish best served cold. My name is Dr. Victor Fries. I am recording what I pray will be mankind's first step toward immortality. Behind me you see the CC-100, a cryogenic freezing chamber of my own design. I created it for the express purpose of freezing subjects stricken with inoperable ailments. Subjects like my own beloved wife, Nora. Once a remedy has been found... Open this door! Open it now! Get away from that equipment. Shut this stuff down. Stop! This is my experiment. Your unauthorized experiment. I ordered funding suspended weeks ago. I'm already three million in debt thanks to you. You can't stop it now. My wife is in there. So bring her out. You can't interrupt the process now. Open it. It's her only chance. This is my equipment. Mine. I have every legal right to use it or not use it as I see fit. I say this project ends now! No! Stay away from her! Murderer! Victor, oh, I'm sorry. I lost my temper. It doesn't have to come to this. We can talk. Oh. Oh. Get out! Get out! Nora! Nora! My God. Yes, it would move me to tears if I still had tears to shed. Tonight I mean to pay back the man who ruined my life. Our lives. Even if you have to kill everyone in the building to do it? Think of it, Batman. To never again walk on a summer's day with a hot wind in your face and a warm hand to hold. Oh yes, I'd kill for that. failed you. I wish there were another way for me to say it. But I cannot. I can only beg your forgiveness and pray you hear me somehow. Some place. Some place where a warm hand waits for mine. All right, so that was the end of that. Um, somebody said one time, Mr. Freeze is the only villain in, in the Batman series that they actually felt sorry for. But the truth is, just about every villain in the Batman series had a past, had a story. 
had something that they dealt with. Even Batman himself had a past. Parents murdered, suffered an unfair life. And so that's what I wanted to bring up to you today. It's when life seems unfair, do not go to war with God. Do not point the finger. And don't say that's, that this is your fault. Because God could very easily point the finger right back at humanity and say, no, it's not. And that's when you have that moment of realization, oh my goodness, it's not his fault. <laughs> it's my fault. And so, I'm not saying it's your fault that you got cancer, but we can look at humanity and say it's humanity's fault. Because when we look at the beginning, that death is a result of sin. For since by man came sin into the world, and death by sin, and therefore death has passed upon all men. That's what the Bible says. And when we start to realize that, you know what? If it wasn't Eve or Adam that made that first trespass or first trans transgression, it would have been myself or it would have been you. And when we start to take ownership, that's when we start to take steps towards recovery and acceptance. Having accountability. Stop blaming someone else. Just accept it for what it is. We don't have to like it. We don't have to agree with it. But I wanted to show you a person very important to me. And this is Job. In Job chapter 1, it says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. If we are going to make it in life, if we want to make it, there is one thing we must do. That is acceptance. Accept what you cannot change. Quit trying to fight God on his will. When I think about Jesus Christ, I think about his obedience and his steadfastness to the very end. Right to the very end. He said in uh, Matthew chapter 26, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. The Bible says that Jesus was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And as we could see here in this chapter, he said, my soul is exceeding sorrowful. That means he was filled with sorrow, sadness. And he prayed to God, God, if it's possible, let this cup pass for me. Don't let me go through this. I don't want to go through this. But he reserved himself to saying, nevertheless, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So he reserved his will to submission to God. And he, and he did not fight him on it. So, as a result, the Bible says that God exalted him and gave him a name above every name. And this serves as an example that when we per, pres, persevere, I can't say it right, through life, when we endure life and make it to the end and say, the Lord gave, the Lord has taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord, and just accept it for what it is, we will be rewarded. And God will be faithful to his word to reward you. So I want you to take hope and take heart that, hey, I get it. 
You get you get cancer diagnosis at, at the age of 37. This is not something you planned on. You just had a baby. Very sad, very very tragic. But just like Mr. Freeze, tragedy will either make you or break you. Tragedy will either make you a hero or it will make you a villain. And the choice is yours. You can either learn from it or you can just not accept it. So I want you guys to understand that no matter what the tragedy is that you go through in life, because we all have tragedy, I could name so many tragedies from people all around me, it would take me all day. As a matter of fact, me and a friend of mine, we were talking about this very thing. We were naming off all these friends that we had, and we all noticed a common theme. They all went through tragedy, and they either gave in to the darkness, to the drugs, to the alcohol, to the depression, or they stayed sober and reserved their strength of mind to get through it. And the difference between those who make it and don't is whether or not you're going to stay sober and accept reality for what it is, not for what it's not, or what you want it to be. Okay, and there's always hope. This is not the end of the story. Mrs. Schulenberg, dead at the age of 37. But this is not the end of her story. And nobody's judging her because, look, we could all be there. Matter of fact, many of us already are who are listening to my voice. And if you're out there who are, and you're if you're out there listening to me and you and you you're wondering, why me? Okay, these things happen to everyone. But like I said, this is not the end of the story. Because one day, I'll tell I'll show you the end. I'll show you the end of the story. It says. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. This is a promise from the Bible that one day God will take away all pain, all death, all sadness, and wipe away all tears from their eyes. Revelation chapter 21. So this is the end of the story, my friend. If you endure to the end, and you just let God be God, and you just be obedient, and not fight him on this, and trust him that, hey, I know this is uncomfortable, But this is not the end of the story. Okay? And do not take your tragedy as a means to turn to evil or the darkness. Okay? To be a a stone-cold killer looking at the past and wondering, why me? Because the past is in the past. There is no going back to the past. Stop looking to the past and look towards the future. Okay? There's a Twilight Zone episode. I'm trying to think of it. Um, where the guy, he goes back into the past. I can't, I can't, I can't remember the name of it. But anyways, he goes, he goes into the past and sees his mom and dad. And he can't go back or he can't, he can't really stay home right he wanted to he was he was like this is my happiest times with mom and dad you know those days were gone and his dad said to him he sat him down he's like look you know maybe they have circuses and you know concerts where you're from 
But this is his time now, talking about uh, his younger self. This is his time now. Don't make him share it. Um, and he says, try looking ahead. That was his final advice. Try looking ahead. That was the advice that the father gave to his son. Try looking ahead. Try looking towards the future. If you only knew what the future held for you, I think you would think a little bit differently. Okay? If you only knew the peace and the love that God has for you, if you endure to the end, you would not be in this type of sadness and regret. And that is all I have for you today, guys. I feel very sad for Mrs. Schulenberg. What a very lovely lady. And I know cancer is a very terrible thing. And uh, if you happen to find yourself in this sort of situation, the best thing to do is to stay <laughs> on meds that take the, take the pain away right to the end. So you have a peaceful passing. That's all you can do, really. If they give you some powerful stuff, stay on it. Just, you know, be faithful to the end. Say your prayers. The Bible says, prepare to meet your God. That's all you can do, man. That's all you can do, you know? I mean, sure, you can go to faith healing uh, church services on a gamble. It might work, but what if it doesn't? What if God decides he's not going to heal you? Or heal your friend or your family, okay? What if he chooses not to? Then you have to accept it. There's still the acceptance factor. You have to accept it. I know I'm long-winded. I know this is a long video. It usually is. But, you know, I have some very valid points that I hope you guys listen to and pay attention to because, yeah, this is good stuff, okay? And um, this is real life. So... You get, the, you get the raw truth here, okay? All right, guys, if you have any questions for me and you need to talk to somebody, you want to reach out for support or advice, feel free to reach out to me. Um, yeah, I'm here. Other people are here. I mean, you have a world. You have a whole world here full of people, a community. So reach out to somebody, all right? I'm sure people care. You just have to look and, and, and find it. But anyways, thanks for listening and watching on BP.